been uh, maybe three to four weeks since I bought this guitar. So this is the Sire H7, basically Sire's version of an ES335. The Larry Carlton model, so Larry Carlton's name is on all of these and um, you know that's a pretty cool endorsement I think. And it seems you can actually find real footage of him playing them live, which I think is certainly worth knowing. Um, you never necessarily know, you know, a guitarist for financial reasons presumably decides to put his name on a guitar and if you never saw them playing it live you'd imagine actually that's just a financial decision but that he's actually playing them I think is pretty cool. So if you've not seen stuff on my channel before, um, I've never really got on too well with the body shape of an ES335 style guitar. I've actually played two in the last kind of month. Uh, real kind of historic uh, Gibson ES335, you know, a sort of three and a half grand one, and another one of Ross Bailey's. Uh, I can't show you that video, but I have that, but I'll have to show it with you at some other stage. Now, that both of those are really nice examples, and I think you'll find, I don't know if it's just me, but to play an ES335 physically feels quite different to any other guitar except for maybe like a jazz bass guitar. By that I mean that your arm is resting significantly higher, you don't have a contour, so it, it all feels a bit different. Now the really good news with this is that the neck is a beautiful kind of full C, not small, not slim and not flat. So some of the Gibson style taper necks I think are, are kind of flatter D shaped this one to me seems like a C. Finish wise it's really really nicely done. I can't really find any blemishes. I've not looked you know super closely but it looks really neatly done. The fret work is great. It doesn't choke out anywhere and it's actually been more fun than I was expecting to play it so It's actually quite surprising to me. I've never actually played it unplugged, but unplugged. It's actually really resonant, which I guess has got to be a good thing for this kind of hollow guitar. So I would rate this guitar really highly and I'd say it's a, a good guitar regardless of the money. This has kind of been a thing that's been playing on my mind a bit recently where I was kind of thinking like a guitar that's good for the money is still not necessarily something that all of us would be interested in having in house but a great guitar is a great guitar no matter what the price is, is kind of what my thinking is on this stuff. So. This I put into a really, really nice guitar category. I think this is the type of guitar that you may want to consider if you got one and you found that you gel with it as an instrument, then you could consider, right, what are my ideal pickups for this kind of guitar? Maybe they're Seth Lover pickups, maybe you put in some Montes, maybe you put in some Seymour Duncan uh, Antiquities or some bare knuckle pickups or something like that in terms of upgrades. That, that might be something that some folks would do. Let me know if you've done that. I do get comments from people saying they have really bonded with their Sire guitars in general which is always good to hear because I don't want to be someone who's saying you know I've had all these great experiences with them and then be hearing back oh but they seem to be a one-off so this is a guitar that I bought with my own money from Anderton's and uh, really really enjoying it and you can sort of play a lot of different styles on it it to me has a bit more playability than some of those other Gibsons that I've played 
it doesn't seem, I don't think, to sustain quite as well as my memory tells me that one of the Gibsons did. But it's a really, really, really nice guitar and the pickups are not super dull, which is, I think, a good thing. You know, we've got the in-between. And then a neck. But I've said before, I think that the thing that really stands out about side guitars to me tends to be the way the neck feels. You're not getting sharp fret ends. Um, and you've got these rolled fretboard edges which under the hand feel very comfortable, maybe slightly worn in, maybe like the sort of thing you get on quite an expensive guitar. For this kind of money, I can't really think of anything that would compete, but I imagine some of the Epiphone inspired stuff, their new stuff, I hear good things about some of those, so that might be worth a look. The Epiphone Elite stuff is quite expensive but I think that's Japan made Epiphone, I don't know if you can still get them but used I would definitely recommend one of those, they're really good guitars um, that I've played. Uh, Eastman I think makes some really good guitars, probably double the price of one of these but I think they're really well regarded. And then obviously Gibson Heritage, these kind of builders would be kind of the, the tip of the spear on this sort of stuff but the amount of money you're paying six times probably more than one of these for that. And uh, you probably want to be very sure that an ES335 guitar is the style of thing that you're wanting before you go for that. Um, so this is, for me, uh, this does everything that I want from an ES335. And, you know, it's not a guitar that I'm going to play all the time. But every time I do want an ES335 thing, I can pick this up and it's sort of satiated that gas a little bit. I think that's a, a good happy medium for me where I can get the vibe of an ES-335, it's good enough for Larry Carlton apparently, um, so it should be good enough for me, and uh, I don't have to spend three and a half grand on one that I wouldn't necessarily play all the time, that's something that I've heard from other folks, you know, their ES-335 is not necessarily a guitar that they take out all the time, it's very much uh, got a bit of a niche, it's uh, a guitar that does a job, but it's that job isn't necessarily all the time, if you know what I mean. So, yeah, I would recommend one of these. Try one out if you can. If you do buy one new, then I guess the good news is with someone like Tomman, I think there's an affiliate link down below if you want to use that, I should get a small kickback. But as I say, I bought this guitar myself from Andertons, and if I didn't get on with it, I would have just sent it back. And I think I recommend you use your rights as a guitar buyer with these kind of retail stores. That is kind of the protection that is there when you're buying a guitar that's been shipped from the Far East. Uh, Indonesia made ebony fretboard. This one doesn't have locking tuners. I think that's just for the Strat and Tele models. But seems really stable, bends nicely and all of that sort of stuff. So would recommend after three or four weeks. And you should see me playing it a bit more. I think I just really like the way in particular the, the bridge pickup sound. So, Catch you in another video soon. Feel free to like and subscribe if that was at all interesting. Uh, let me know if you get on with your side. Instruments in general. Seven. Would wholeheartedly recommend. Obviously, it looks really awesome in white as well. Cheers.